Hey guys, welcome back. We're studying the golden era of animation with Disney Studios and our seventh grade designers. In just a few minutes, we'll have a bunch of seventh graders here ready to share their answers for the making of Pinocchio documentary. It's on YouTube, it's called No Strings Attached. Go check it out if you have a minute and then come on back and you can find out how you did. Kira, hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Um, Good, I'm recording this, so it's just giving the audience, who will hopefully be some of our fellow Whitby community members, a bit of background on Pinocchio. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Anaya? Did you guys have any background knowledge of Pinocchio? Yeah, I've read the book. You've, you've read the book? Yeah, I think I've read, I've watched the movie when I was like three or something. Hey, Charlie, Brandon, Sachi, Ariana, Henry, how are you guys? If you don't want to say hello, you can just wave or nod or give me a thumbs up or something like that and making sure you guys can hear me. Um, I want everyone to please take out their Pinocchio trivia and it reads the making of Pinocchio, no strings attached, answer key. Yep. Okay, cool. You guys are nodding along. Thank you very much. We're going to start with name that character. I'm going to ask Julian to help us out. Friend Thomas said he ended up as the heart of the story instead of being squished. Uh, Jiminy Cricket. Very good. Jiminy Cricket. Julian was telling me a moment ago, he actually read the book as well. And in the original story, as you guys know from the documentary, Jiminy Cricket had a really small role. But in order to give the film some heart, they extended his role. Next up, I would like Vasilisa to please read this next one. Andreas Deja said the original character had a very geometric shape and looked wooden. Uh, Pinocchio. Very good, Pinocchio. Yeah, they wanted to make him more likable, and the original version was just, it was too geometric. It, it looked wooden and not, not lifelike enough. But well, isn't the point? Yeah, that's a really good point, Luca. We're trying, they were trying to find a balance of lifelike and puppet because his okay. whole thing is he wants to be a real boy. That's kind of his goal. We're going to talk about who this group of animators named the Nine Old Men, which is like really famous group. We want to know who they looked up to. If Samantha could please read the question and give us the first answer, please. Um, what two star animators did the Nine Old Men look up to? Uh, the first one is Bill Taylor. She's right. They say it really quickly in the doc. Here's the correct spelling for you guys. It's actually Bill Taitla. Thank you, Samantha. Um, Anaya, can you give us the next one here? Um, I got Art Babbitt. Yes, Art Babbitt. Very good. And Anaya also spelled it correctly. Who said it? Kira, if you could start with that first quote and tell us who said it, please. Um... Pinocchio is a book about mysteries, morals, and improving stories. Brian something. She wrote Brian Sibley, which is the correct answer. There we go, Brian Sibley. He's like a historian of animation, and he kind of broke it down. What is this book all about? Charlie, if you can help us out and give us the next one. Pinocchio was kind of unlikable, a troublemaker. Frank Thomas. Yes, very good. Let's uh, ask Sachi for the next one. As usual with Disney, the casting is perfect. And I got Jerry Beck. Very good. Yeah, Jerry Beck, another famous animation historian. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Josh. What year was this cartoon short Mother Goose Melody's release? And I said 1931. Very good, 1931. Brandon, if you could help us out with the next one. Yes, my internet is not great. Okay, I'll read the question. You can just give us the answer, okay? What year was yeah. was cartoon short King Neptune released? Phone a friend. You can ask someone else, maybe if they can help you out. Um, yeah. Charlie, can you read that question and give us the answer? Uh, what year was cartoon short King Neptune released? 1935. The actual, that's very close. The actual correct answer is 1934. Good guess, though. Alex, can you tell us all about the character of Figaro? Larson. Eric Larson, you said, right? Eric Larson animated Figaro. Gianfranco, can you tell us who animated this character? Uh, uh, Milt Call animated Pinocchio. Yes, the correct answer is Milt Call. Henry, can you help us out? Who was the voice of Pinocchio? Dickie Jones. Thank you, Henry, for giving us that answer. Moving on, let's talk about Jiminy Cricket. Uh, Ariana, are you there? 
Yeah. Tell us who animated Jiminy Cricket. Ward Kimball. That is correct. Ward Kimball. Annika, who voiced Jiminy Cricket? Um, Cliff Edwards. Cliff Edwards was like a character actor back then. He was a voice that people knew. When they walked into the theater to see this, they were already familiar with that voice. It was like a really good choice. Luca, who animated Lampwick? My computer's like not loading. I, I think I have it. Right. Uh, uh, Fred Moore. Very good, Fred Moore. They showed that this character, Lampwick, he kind of looked like the animator. Alex, you there? Yeah. Great. Can you please tell us uh, what song won an Academy Award in 1940? When you wish upon a star. He's abs. Oops. Oh, I did it out of order. He's absolutely right. Julian, can you tell us the name of the whale? Uh, the whale was named Monstro. He's right. Hey, Gianfranco, can you read this first one for us and tell us the answer? Go for it. Uh, 1934 was when um, the cartoon music line was released. Very good. No. Henry, are you there? Yes, I I'm here, Mr. L. Cool. Can you read this one for us and tell us the answer? Because I saw you had that Here one. Was, uh, what year was cartoon short the band concert released? Answers 1935. Very good. So just one year later. Charlie, can you answer this bottom question for us, please? Yep, I'm here. Cool. What location in Pinocchio is associated with jazz music? Pleasure Island. And in the doc, it was interesting how they said, wow, the music totally changed. It all of a sudden became more jazzy to signify a new location and a totally different feel there as well. Okay, Annika got this one right. Who said it part two? The pinnacle of effects animation, Dave Bossert. Very good. Dave Bossert. Brandon, are you there? There he is. Read this second one and tell us who said it, if you wouldn't mind. My internet is not good. I'll read the uh, quote. Walt Disney was after just one thing in the execution of Pinocchio. Perfection. I can hear you. My, my document is... It looks like Brandon's document might be frozen. Josh, thank you so much. Leonard Malton. Huh. Leonard Malton. Josh, do you know who Leonard Malton is? No, I, I just heard him say it in the... He did say it. He's a, a really well-known film reviewer, and he puts together like the list of the 100 best movies and stuff every year. Thank you, Josh. Leonard Malton is the correct answer. Who headed up Disney's character model department? Josh, since you're on the line, why don't you tell us this one? All right. So I said Joe Grant. Joe Grant is correct. Good job. Samantha, are you there? Can you give us the answer for this next one, the question and answer, please? Of Geppetto's workshop, Albert Herder. Very good. Albert Herder did all those little details in Geppetto's workshop. Anaya, can you read this next question and give us the answer as well, please? Uh, yes. So, who voiced both the coachman and the stromboli? I said Charles. Yep, you cut out there at the end, but yes, you're right. It was Charles Judell's. He did two totally different voices for the same movie. Moving on, animation, fill in the blanks. Only got a few left. Sachi, can you start us off with that first one, please? Um, for the morning in the village sequence, instead of shooting vertically down, they shot it horizontally. Thank you, horizontally. Ariana, um, can you give us the question and answer for this next one here? The music style of the Blue Fairy is now the standard sound of magic. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Ariana. Luca, if you could unmute yourself and then tell us this last one here, if you wouldn't mind. All right. Um, the retroscoping is shooting live action, shooting live action film, then tracing each frame. Very good. He's right. Rotoscope. Yeah, you gotta you gotta shoot the film first, and then you trace each frame, known as rotoscoping. Hey, Samantha, can you help us out and tell us, starting with what one thing? One thing, Andy Strawberry gone for over one year. Water effects. Thank you. Water effects. Last one. Vasilisa, are you there? It's about Mel Blank. Can you read us the question and answer? Mel Blank's one line. It was a hiccup. Mel Blank was a voice actor. He did almost every single Looney Tunes voice. Disney had never worked with him before. They bring him on for this one movie. They film a whole sequence of, with his character and then they decide to make the character a mute so he doesn't have any lines. He ends up doing one thing and that's one hiccup. Hey, good job, you guys. Thank you very much. Just give a quick wave to all the teachers watching. So that's a, that's a wrap for the Pinocchio trivia. Answer key complete. Oh, we're together.